Welcome to this week's edition of Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Chi Chen Lo. Last weekend, Taiwanese voters just elect their new president. KMT presidential candidate Ma ying jeou won a landslide victory over its opponent, uh, Frank Shea of the DVP, by a huge margin of 2.2 million votes. So how do we interpret the result of the election, and what are the impacts of the election results on the future of party politics in Taiwan? And these are topics we are hoping to address today. In today's program, we are very delighted and honored to have the guest, uh, Professor Yu Qinxin. He is the director of the Election Study Center at National Zhengzhou University to come to our program to share with us his views on the future of politics in Taiwan. Professor Yu, welcome to our program. Thank you. Next to you, Dr. Lo. Uh, are you surprised by the result of the election? Not that surprising that uh, for decades uh, we have been focused on electoral studies and mm -hmm. we found that, well, DPP has been quite decreasing over the past 10 years, mm -hmm. now, particularly over the past four years. Mm -hmm. And that will be quite reasonable to see that, well, DPP lost the election. I think most people expect that the DPP uh, was supposed to l lose the election, but by that kind of margin, uh, are you surprised? A uh, little bit surprised because uh, my ex expectation would be around, well, 0 0.1 million. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but to some degree, that uh, particularly in the last period of the campaign, mm -hmm. we found that the DPP has been suffering quite a lot yeah. because uh, we found the DPP run the wrong direction of the campaign. Mm -hmm. For example, that uh, too much focus on uh, my angel's personal characteristics, yeah. that's not good. Okay. Uh, for, for sometimes, the friendship has some good policy. Mm -hmm. But this good policy has not been uh, pretty uh, marketing in, mm -hmm. in campaigns. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, for example, the DPP's performance has been quite a reason mm -hmm. and uh, the core reason for the defeat for the DPP this time. So in addition to the uh, not successful, non-successful uh, campaign tactics or strategies by the uh, DPP, what do you think are the overall uh, reasons for the defeat of the DPP? Well, the first one should be the performance of the DPP over the past eight years. Mm -hmm. The second will be the chance popularity. The president's popularity has mm -hmm. been quite, well, dangerous for the uh, French in election. Mm -hmm. yeah. The third one will be, well, the rising mass popularity. Mm -hmm. Maybe the fourth will be, well, DPP is not that efficient to promote its economic policy, particularly mm -hmm. French's idea about, well, mortgage loan for those young generations yeah. and also to take care of those uh, minorities. Yeah. That would be the four reasons I've tried to say. You mentioned the economic policies and some, many people say that economics is the issue of mm -hmm. the campaign and election this year. Do you agree with that? I agree uh, because economy should be the main reason and uh, in every normal election. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this time, we are very happy to see the two candidates they provide, propose pretty good uh, economic proposals, mm -hmm. either from Frank Shea or from Ma ying -jo. And unfortunately, we don't see any serious debate mm -hmm. between the two candidates. What I have watched from the TV is that, well, Frank Shea criticized uh, Ma ying uh, one China common market. Mm -hmm. But this is quite different from what Ma ying said about the cross trade common market. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, Ma ying he does not good provide good explanation about what's my policy different from the one China policy, That's right. one China common market. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good to see a policy debate, mm -hmm. but it's not that good to see that well, either side can provide a very convincing argument mm -hmm. on this one. Speaking of young uh, voters, uh, as we know at this time, we have uh, more than uh, a million uh, young voters, or especially first time voters. What are the general uh, voting preference of these young uh, voters? Young voters, by definition, they hate politics. <laughs> they love party, but they, have, they don't like particular party. Mm -hmm. So uh, even we can mobilize people to go out and cast a vote, uh, they are temporary. Mm -hmm. So to some degree, uh, young generation they are more prefer to the oppositions. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, because uh, young generation, they, they don't look too much on policy impact, and they look on, well, we need a new face. Mm -hmm. And whenever there is a well, very long-term, another long-term, very uh, poor performance in common party, mm -hmm. well, that will be the target to criticize. Mm -hmm. So the young generation in Taiwan so far, they prefer the KMT or the mm -hmm. opposition. Mm -hmm. But if we look back to the uh, 2000, OK, the TPP enjoy the same situation as the KMT today. That's right. That's what I mean that, well, in the year 2000, the young generation, they prefer the TPP. They yeah. hate the incumbent KMT. Mm -hmm. But this is also the case for today. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that would be the young children right now. And that's to get the uh, political landscape as a result of this election. Mm -hmm. And some people say that this election was uh, crushing or catastrophic defeat for the TPP. But still, uh, the, the party managed to get 41% uh, of votes. How do you see the, uh, uh, this kind of political map redrawn after the election? Well, I don't see that's a quite a disaster for the DDP because 40% uh, has been quite a stronghold for the, KMT, uh, for the DDP to, mm -hmm. to survive. Uh, the key should be that, well, whether DPP continue to represent some people in Taiwan, particularly mm -hmm. majority of people in Taiwan, what do, what do they think? And uh, what will the DPP do in the next uh, four years or next eight years? Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, in a single member district, only one seat. So either A or B will win this election. Mm -hmm. So the next one will be, well, can they survive the next one? Yeah. So it's quite difficult for us to say that, well, DPP will disappear right now mm -hmm. because uh, their stronghold or their social base was still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in the long run, people are hoping that there could be a, a two-party system in Taiwan. But in the short term, we do see a, a, a one-party dominance in the legislative union and also uh, uh, you know, take the seats of presidency. How do you see this kind of one-party dominance uh, uh, situation in Taiwan right now? Uh, we have a new uh, legislative system and uh, also a new uh, president right now. Mm -hmm. And this one, we have a, uh, the president and also the parliamentary majority uh, comes from the same party. Mm -hmm. So a uh, unified government uh, actually is a consequence of the, the two elections. That's right. So how do we evaluate this uh, unified government? The problem is that, well, uh, will the KMT corrupt or not? If the candidate does not corrupt, mm -hmm. then why not unify government? Mm -hmm. But the difficulty will be, it's not, diff it's not easy to, for a political party without power, uh, without corruption. Mm -hmm. So, that's uh, the rule power, you know. Exactly, that's what it means. Um, the problem is that, well, we have to wait and see. We cannot mm -hmm. jump to conclusion to say that, well, the KMT will corrupt in this uh, first mm -hmm. four years. Mm -hmm. Perhaps maybe in the next four years, but mm -hmm. at least four years. And, uh, Today we are, uh, keep a very close eyes on, on the KMT's performance. Mm -hmm. So I don't uh, worry about the unified government. Mm -hmm. uh, what I worry about is that, well, will the opposition party strong enough mm -hmm. to check and balance? Do you think the, the opposition yeah. party, the DPP, is strong enough now to check and balance the uh, you know, majority party of the KMT? Well, what I mean strong enough does not mean the uh, parliamentary seats received by the, K by the DPP because mm -hmm. they are too weak. Yeah. What I mean is that, well, they have a 40% popular vote. But how this can we translate that, you know, that vote into a you know, political force that can check and balance the ruling party? I don't worry about the DPP uh, is unable to do that because <laughs> it has been pretty good to mobilize people to create that KMT. Mm -hmm. Particularly, uh, right now, they are in opposition. Uh, by definition, opposition try to criticize the KMT or the, the incumbent party. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's quite easy for the DPP to survive and uh, based on the 40% and uh, to move on. Another thing, that, another thing that people are paying attention to is the so-called uh, political strongholds of different parties in Taiwan society. In the old days, uh, the uh, DPP uh, stronghold is, is in the south, southern part of Taiwan. But this time, the KMT won almost every county uh, in this island, also offshore islands. How do you see the changing political landscapes in Taiwan? Uh, still performance mm -hmm. and also change popularity. These two factors you know, that discourage people in the, in the South to support the, the DPP. Mm -hmm. Because uh, people in the South, they have a very strong feeling toward the DPP because they believe this party is a good party that brings clean politics in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But not the case in the, four years, in the past four years. Mm -hmm. So they are disappointed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other reason will be, well, Mainjo's effort for a long stay in the south and the central Taiwan yeah. has some kind of effect, impact on these people. Mm -hmm. They think that, well, Mainjo has been not that bad as DPP predict. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two reasons, the chance popularity and then Mainjo's popularity. They, these two reinforce each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, this makes uh, people in the, in, the no in the south, in the north, to reconsider their support for the mm -hmm. DPP. One thing that people point to as, as a very important part of this election is that uh, Mainjo, Mr. Mainjo is not a locally born uh, so-called Taiwanese or Fukien people. He was born in Hong Kong and Menendez coming to Taiwan. He is now elected as a president of this country. How do you see this kind of ethnic uh, politics in Taiwan? A long story uh, date back to uh, 87 by Jiang Jingguo. Mm -hmm. When uh, he was a president and meeting uh, what he called the 12 friends 
in, in, in Taiwan, mm -hmm. he said that, uh, well, I'm a Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. That was quite a well, moment, moment, momentum for the uh, KMT or Solos or the so-called Menendez in Taiwan to reconsider themselves as a Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. And based on this tradition, as uh, Jiang Jingguo, he uh, created some uh, legacy mm -hmm. also to be followed by Ma ying that mm -hmm. to be a Taiwanese. So Ma ying has uh, announced himself that even I was dead, and uh, I was a dead Taiwanese. Yeah. So that work has been, uh, well, touching to some uh, Taiwanese to say that, well, even though Ma ying was not born in Taiwan, he was born in Hong Kong, and also he uh, came from a Menendez family. Mm -hmm. But he identified with Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So I would say that people in Taiwan, they, they don't took that serious about difference between uh, ethnic origins. Mm -hmm. But they uh, look more uh, upon those uh, performance or commitment mm -hmm. for the Taiwan or on the island. Yes, yeah. I think people uh, began to uh, forget about the ethnic uh, politics in Taiwan. But the thing is, uh, there are also discussions about identity politics. In other words, ethnicity is different from identity. Identity is something about uh, what your country is and so on. So when we come back, we'll talk about how uh, identity politics play into play in, in this election and what are the future ident identities in Taiwan. As we know that uh, UA election studies and also study in the long run about the rise of Taiwanese identity and how will that uh, play into the elections and the future elections in Taiwan. You mean the self-identity? Self-identity of Taiwanese. Taiwanese, and, Chinese, or that's right. Identity. And we'll okay. talk about that when we come back. Okay. And stay with us after this meeting.